To most of us, Labor Day means time off from work, maybe a barbecue to mark the official end of summer. But how much do you know about what inspired its creation? The labor movement. The labor movement started around the Industrial Revolution, a time in the late 19th century when America exploded in size and wealth. Advances in technology created manufacturing jobs, and people moved to cities to work in factories. But it wasn't the workers getting rich. It was their bosses who raked in big profits by paying low wages for long hours. Fed up with big business, industrial workers created unions to fight for better conditions. Unions are the backbone of the labor movement. But what exactly did they accomplish? Well, for one, you can thank the labor movement for your work-free weekend. In the late 1800s, the average American worked as much as 100 hours a week. Unions held strikes to demand shorter work weeks and an eight-hour workday to make time for family and relaxation. The most famous strike, the Haymarket Riots, happened in Chicago on May 1st, 1886, with thousands of people taking to the streets, and their voices only grew louder from there. The labor movement also protested child labor. Remember those black and white photos of children with dirty, sad faces wearing overalls and beanie caps? Those kids weren't playing outside, but they were working in factories. In 1881, unions demanded that businesses stop hiring kids under 14. And slowly but surely, measures against child labor caught on around the country. Eventually, all those protests got results. In 1938, Congress passed a law called the Fair Labor Standards Act, which set the 40-hour work week, regulated child labor, and set standards for minimum wage and overtime pay. In the 1930s and 1940s, workers were also able to negotiate health benefit plans from their employers. Though union membership is on a decline today, it's undeniable that the labor movement forever changed the way Americans live, work, and even relax. Young people in large numbers came out and joined what became known as the Red Guards. These largely terroristic organizations were used to publicly humiliate, assault, and in some cases, even murder political enemies of Mao and the Communist Party.